general head down position, what makes it work, what makes it feel so comfortable. <clears throat> Once people can fly head down, you'll, you'll notice that they actually almost stop flying in a sit. And it's not because they progress through the sit and now they only want to fly on their head because it's more fun or anything like that. They fly on their head because actually once you can do it, it's easier. It's, it's the way your body really would like to be. We're much heavier when we set the centre of that balance of our body. I think it's roughly the bottom of our ribs if you had a group of our body on a seesaw. So we would like to be falling that direction all the time, which is one of the reasons why the sit fly is also harder because it's sort of we're heavy at the top. It's not particularly not particularly stable. We also as well we are almost working like a shuttle cock because you've got the heavy end of your body and you've got your legs doing whatever it is they do, but they're kind of working working like feathers. So um, there's three three positions on your head. You've got um, a daffy and a shelf and a stripe. And if you like one, so you've got your, your daffy and your straddle are not that far away from each other and your straddle and your shelf are not that far away from each other, but your daffy and your shelf are quite a long way away from each other. They're all, we're all trying to create a balanced position all the way through, that's the, that's the key with this. So, <clears throat> from the side profile, our daffy is going to look something along these kind of lines. Trying to get my proportions correct. All right, like that. Um, so, roughly speaking, if you take away the body side of this, your legs are balanced with themselves. If you take away the legs, your lower body is balanced. So, <clears throat> give or take, the angle that we've got with our leg here, I haven't got it quite right because I'm on the wrong angle, but roughly speaking, the angle that I've got here with this front part of my leg here and this bit are going to be about the same and they're, they're pushing against each other. One's driving us backwards a little bit, one's forwards. And then the amount of drive you're going to get from the back of your leg and the front of your shin here, those two surfaces are working against each other as well. If ever one element of that is doing something different to its opposite partner, it's not necessarily that you're not going to fly on your head, it's more that you're going to be drifting forwards or backwards or something. But in a time you've got 14 foot and it's a real, like, I know that I'm moving even if it's very, very slowly, because even if you're moving at half a mile an hour, the, the walls come up to you fairly quickly. In the sky, we can actually be in a position that's, that's not perfect. We can be moving around quite a lot, and it doesn't matter. So, so it leads on to, when you're in the sky, how do you know that you'd be in this position versus Uh, this one. Because it might be that if we are, if we're using the horizon, this by the way is obviously incorrect, this is correct. If we're looking at the horizon, we are, um, we could argue with ourselves that we, that, that, that we're flying upright. But in actual fact, this guy is looking at the horizon, this guy is looking at his horizon. The only difference is he's plowing himself across the sky at pretty high speed. The only way you're really going to know if you're in this versus this is by having a look around and seeing what's going on with, with you. If, you. if you're on your own, you haven't got a point of reference, you need to be able to actually see what's actually happening. And this again leads us on to wearing a full face versus an open face. If I'm wearing a full face, there is no way that I can see, probably won't even be able to see my hands, let alone my knee and my feet. Just not going to happen. If I can't see my knee and my feet and my hands, then I could be in this position just the same way as I could be in this position. 
they'll, they'll basically feel the same. One will actually feel like it's when you know what's going on, you'll recognise the difference. In the shorter term, you won't. So, uh, let's see. We do it on here. Yeah. 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 So, if I'm like this, yes, I want to, have, want to keep my face parallel with the horizon. Very, very easy for me to have a look down at my knee and my foot without changing my face. Obviously, if I did this, then I'm going to get more air on my back, and then that is going to give me more of a forwards drive. If I've got a full face on, the only way I'm going to see what's going on with my legs is if I move it so that that full face bit gets out of the way of my vision, it's going to give me a drive. So, open face. Honestly, it's way forwards for this, it really is. <clears throat> I quite like hearing the, the wind speed, speed up as well, very exciting. So, if you've got that leg out the front, this leg doesn't have to be perfect. You might be moving a bit, but you're going to be upright. If you can see those elements, and you can see your horizons in the middle of your vision, see those elements, you are upright. Um, if I take away, ignore the top half for a minute, um, we look at the bottom half. This bit is actually independent of the, of the top. So we're getting a certain uplift from here. We're probably looking at a good 85% of your lift is going to come from the top of your body. Which is why this is one of the reasons why this is going to feel so much nicer than your sit position. You're being pulled from the top. And not just a little bit, but a lot. And it's going to it's make this feel a lot nicer. You're only really getting that last little bit from down here. Okay? It's not very big. Now, how this works is you'll see that this guy's arms are quite a bit more forwards than his back. So, my arms are only that wide. My body is this wide. We're looking at something like in reality, probably a, a time six kind of scenario because everything, if you imagine, this is only say, four times wider than my arms, but because it's all together as one unit, it's doing so much more. So I'm getting all this air on this, the biggest surface on my back, on my, uh, I'm even going to put his arms there. Getting all that surface, that push on my back, and I've basically got the same amount here as I have on here, as far as drives. So this is driving me forwards a little bit, this is driving me backwards a little bit. Now what can happen here as well, when we don't have to, you've probably seen people flying this in the tunnel. Some people have to fly with their arms quite far forwards, and other people actually fly with their arms almost straight out to the sides. The reason is, um, it's going to be their size. So if someone's really big, then we actually need to we need to utilise this because if we don't utilise it, the guy's not going to get off the net unless we really crank it up, really crank it up. This you know obviously hard work, more dangerous, etc. Obviously dangerous. It's, it's just more wind. It's harder to, to get into the gist of this. So the heavier guy is going to be flying with their arms right out in the front. <clears throat> the lighter guy doesn't need to do that, he flies his arms out to the back, out to the side, where actually you're getting almost nothing from the back, and you're just getting that extra little bit of direct uplift from the arms. You don't have to use the, 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 the pushing and pulling effect of your arms and your back to work together. <clears throat> That's not to say that you could be a lighter person, and depending on how you've been coached, you may well end up flying like that anyway, and you might just be flying with generally at lower speeds. Just depends. So that's your daffy position. Um, it's quite a good idea to try and start off with as much lift from the legs as possible, and then introduce the, the lift from the, from the arms and the back. So, if I was in the sky and I was, my old going to deal with this, and I was just here with my arms, my back and my arms aren't doing anything, but 
this is going to be very, very stable because actually I've got the heavy end of my body, like the weight in the shock of cock, and this is like flying me. It's going to be really easy to fly with this. As I introduce my arms, without thinking about it, I'm also going to be getting a little bit from my back as well. So I'm going to move my back without even noticing it. Um, if we get onto our back and we suddenly go, chances are we've kind of put in a very big input, the rest of our body is not going to get used to the sudden amount of pressure at the wrong end of our body. So it's almost like you take a shuffle cock and you've got it falling nicely, but then suddenly you just kind of like shove a couple of smaller feathers out the bottom of the weighted end. You know, it's not going to fly very nicely like that. So, you can actually fly this with the legs and then you go nice and slow and smooth and introduce the arms and the back and take your time with it, so no rush. So there's your down feet position. Um, the other position that we use, um, which will fall at roughly the same speed as this, maybe very slightly faster, is going to be the shelf. Um, shelf works a little bit differently. Something like that. All right. Now what we have here is a slightly different way of doing the same job. Thankfully, the two legs are basically doing the same, the same job behind us. They're in the same position. So what's good about this is one leg's doing something completely different to the other. It feels weird. It's going to feel strange. This actually feels quite nice. This is the position of movement. This is the position of falling straight down. In the end, you're going to want to have both things in the, in the longer term. <coughs> in the tunnel in particular, we learn this one, because it's that's what we're starting with. We've got 14 foot tube, and actually we're learning how to fall straight down first before we start learning how to move in. In the sky, you might learn the, the shelf and straddle first. It doesn't really make a great bit of difference. Um, what's happening here is you can see how we've got a bit of a bend in your, at the hips. We've got the same amount of legs out the front of our hips as, as the amount of feet behind us. And that's what gives, gives us a balance. So that is a balanced unit in its own right. And then going down to the back, what we're saying is this, this is a balance unit as well. It does the same job as a daffy. Um, it's difficult to demonstrate this, but you could in fact have, um, if you were in the very, very slowest falling um, shelf, you would be somewhere like, somewhere like this. Your feet are further apart than your knees. And you've got a bit of a bend here, and then your arms are out right the front like that. I can't really see from here whether I'm, well, whether I'm properly looking at balance or not. So this is flat, direct uplift. You'll see that my feet are further apart than my knees, because in fact, if I bring my knees further apart than my knees, my feet come together. The air comes off my body, it burbles this part of my legs, and excuse me, give me some bad lift. Okay, so weirdly, by bringing your knees together, which you would think would give us less lift, then means the feet can come apart, which then means that gives us more lift. And that's the bit really doing the work. And the arms are working together for, uh, to work out the body. The straddle. Um, it's a faster falling position, which is why skydivers would tend to be um, using it. Oh, don't want to sad, do we? <laughs> uh, so skydivers are going to tend to use the straddle because it's it's something that we can almost kind of just say to someone, right, get out, make your legs really wide, and bend at the knees a little bit, and we're we're fundamentally there. So. The back with this is a lot straighter, as a general rule. Um, the legs very slightly bent at the hips, 
and then much more upright than he's got a very you're a doctor guy, that's no one's got the legs that long, have they? No one's got the legs that long. Um, and the arms are basically kind of you know out to the side here. Kind of like this new I've seen people sort of flying pizza hands or kind of thing. Uh, sort of they're looking like this kind of action. Well, do you know what? I'm I'm a big fan of the pizza hands. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with the pizza hands. Everyone wants to kind of go with the, the cool tunnel movements, but actually in the sky, if if you wanted to get somebody to have a, a, a nice head down experience as quickly as possible, then do you know what? Really wide legs, bending at the knees, okay, and having your hands out the side like this, trying to sort of help with the balance. It's actually one of the quickest ways to get someone on their head. And you can, in time, you know, do more and more of it and and make it fairly maneuverable. The, the, the thing that we'll notice with these is, these are very good at doing things like um, taking a, a round or taking a dog. You can actually do that with these other positions. Imagine the pizza hands going from here to here. It's, it's not really going to happen. <coughs> so, for the moment, for the sky, this one, I would probably leave this one out and I would probably teach one or one or the other of these for, for a skyline. Um, part of the reason is because we want to we exit this, we want to exit the plane and get into our, uh, our entire position as soon as possible. If someone's got daffy legs, no matter what your position is, you're going to give them dirty air on, on your legs. You're probably as well going to be leaving linked with this person. So if you're leaving linked, even this position is going to be, you know, conflicting, you know, your legs are going to be on top of each other's. This one's going to be a lot better. You can both uh, leave the plane. So what I would tend to do is I would say to the student, hold on to my suit here and here. I'll hold on to their rig and we'll, you, you fall out basically. It's all you do and you let nature take its course. It's nice and slow, it takes about five or six seconds to finally end up on your head. The heavy end of both of these bodies with legs that are really wide with a little bit of a bend. You do this nice little shuttlecock effect. It all just kind of falls over on its own. Before you know where you are, you're now totally upside down, holding holding each other like that. The nice thing about holding the uh, student like this is actually, rather than adopting a pizza hand shape, we do get a bit closer to being in a shelf. And with an open face helmet, you can't see giving anyone any hand signals, but you can say to them, bend your legs. And their, their face is this far away from you, so there's no reason why, you know, if they, if they come down and say, I don't really understand what you were talking about. <laughs> I did see, I think I saw the word legs when you were talking. I see anything else. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not talking about an injury I had with my legs when I was 10 years old. You know, there's, there's only really a few things we're going to be communicating about here. Um, and we talked about the position and whatever, whatever. So you can kind of go over, you know, I'm likely to be saying to you, bend your legs. And before you get out of the plane, you can actually say that to them. I'm going to say to you, bend your legs, or whatever. Or straighten your arms. And sometimes people are like, like pulling in really, really close. You actually want to get that distance so that they start feeling a bit more independent. <clears throat> so you explain to someone, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to be, you're not going to have to lip read my, my life story here. We're just talking about a bit of your body. You will end up getting in, once you sort of get that little bit of separation, into much more of this sort of position. And we, you could, see I've got two, the vigil, obviously it's not very accurate, the vigil is saying 220, with a friend of mine in this, this position, just holding this, just letting it accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. It's a bit heavier than um, So you can really 
clock up some speed. If we're doing this kind of thing and you're linked, it's quite nice as an experience, so you've got a lot of things to overcome. Firstly, the person's now upside down and they're trying to feel that. Um, secondly, trying to get some kind of notion of feeling what the position might, and how that might work for them. So there's a lot going on. Chances are you're going to hear your whatever five and a half round ditter and they're going to just, just still be smiling at you saying we're going fast aren't we? And like, yeah we're going really fast now. <laughs> <laughs> and and not absolutely like no idea what, what's going to happen next. So you then need to have a safe departure, you and your buddy. And really and truly the only way that we're going to make this safe is we're now going so fast that he needs to go backwards and you need to go backwards. This is actually easier said than done. All, this, all you need to do in fact is put your chin up and let go of each other and that's it. However, chances are people tend to get more of a forwards push with this than a backwards drive. So if you're in a scenario of five and a half round where you're holding on to this guy <clears throat> and you're feeling like you're being pushed, um, you putting your chin up and getting out of there isn't going to be enough, he's going to come with you. So you're going to have to say to him, well ahead of time, sort of, you know, if you've got your wits about you, 7,000 feet or something like that, you'll say, okay, put your chin up. And it might even be that you need to let go of the, 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 the harness and, and go like this, put your chin up, so that you, you start to get them to actually pull away from you a little bit. Once you can start to feel that, you go, okay, Go, chin up now. And, and if nothing else, you can depart and you can be safe. And he will inevitably fall onto his back bed or whatever and go from there. But that's the, that's the big thing that can happen here. Go so fast, one guy starts to peel out the other part, the person just kind of like tracks into them. While you've got physical contact with the person, you're actually in quite a good scenario. It's not a safe scenario, actually. Um, they can't go anywhere, they can't cork into you because you've got hold of them. Even if they, even if you found yourself in a scenario where one body was like this and the other body was like this, driving towards the other one, you, you, you've got safety all the way down to that point where, you, where you, it's time to break off because you're holding on to the person. Um, <clears throat> if someone was digging into you like this, Tell them to bend their legs and sort of stop that, that sort of super lean that's driving them, bend their legs, and it will kind of give them a little bit more lift from the legs, which will then kind of stand and make them a little bit more upright. So let's say we've, we've had a nice play around with one, two, whatever jumps of doing a linked exit, just kind of falling out of the plane. You can also have a little go at. Uh, falling onto as a, as a back track or a belly track and into head down. So um, ordinarily, if you literally, you're in the door and you're holding on to your buddy and you just fall out like that, you are going to end up on your head. It's going to be quite nice. But we also want to think about going onto our back and uh, falling out like this. And ending up going into the, into the track like that. Because that's actually how they're going to end up doing it when they become more independent with this. So then you're in a scenario, you're still holding in the, in the same place. You can be low in the door and you want to key with the head because everyone's like holding on to something. And then it's the safe of letting go of the plane. And the same rules apply, but instead of falling out like this, you're, you're going to be falling, falling down like that. So it's the same, it's the same rules. The difference is as well that the air is going to be on the lower person's back and it's going to go from the taller person, the, the guy on the top uh, belly, effectively, and it will change places onto their back. So it's going to feel different. They need to do, they need to do all of these exits. So let's say then we're in a scenario where we've exited 
and we were working on the, the link text it, okay, we're flying, we're in a sort of a, uh, a straddle shelf kind of position, and everything's really good and kind of like giving, giving the guy a little bit of extra leeway. Oh yeah, that's good, cool, all right, you let go, you let go. Okay, they let go, and you know, if you steady a few wobbles, then, all right, okay, we let go on one hand, yeah, okay, cool, now we're flying. This is the bit where it can get quite dangerous for the coach. So, <clears throat> you've got one guy here, um, doing his thing, and then you've got the coach. Um, if this guy then wobbles and corks, he is going to end up with his head hitting your stomach or your legs, depending on how far away you are from him. You know, if you're 10 foot away, he will actually be kicking the shoe because it's happened so fast. If you're 6 foot away, that's probably where you're going to end up. So when, you, when, when a person first gets released, you don't have the opportunity to get the distance. Or maybe you've only just, you've only got away a couple of feet because you might feel you want to go back and dock in to, to sort of steady the guy. This is the bit that's potentially quite dangerous. And that's not going to hurt you. That's going to hurt him. That's going to, that's going to damage his neck. Um, if you're in a scenario where you are higher than him, all right, now when he corks out, you've now got necks hitting each other. There was a coach died actually in America from exactly this. He was higher than a student. So the bottom line is the coach needs to be lower than that. The coach needs to be down here. <clears throat> um, which then leads on to where would you have your camera set up for head down? What I do is I tend to have my GoPro uh, set at this kind of an angle so that when we link together and on the same level, that GoPro actually gets everything. I can actually watch their entire body position as they're going out of the plane and we can talk about the exit. The other thing is, when you're here, if you have in your head, okay, the angle of the camera's up, they're up here, that's cool. Um, I know that if the camera's angled like that, the camera's got them. I don't need to worry about that. And as long as I'm keeping, keeping eyes on them, then I'm lower than them and I'm safe. And we're talking about you being lower by only one or two feet is going to be the difference between it uh, if that person corks into you, between it damaging them and you, or, or not, or complete missing. So that's the way I would, that's the way I would go with it. The other thing that happens with this, let's say for example you're a little bit lower, this is really good for him because chances are people, as a general rule with, with the head down stuff, they're very rarely straight bodied enough and got their chin up enough. So the chin is not, the head is not like when I stood here, it's not like this, this isn't enough for normal head down flying. This would actually give me a forward drive. If my head's like this, now I'm falling straight to earth, but it's a little bit more up than is, than is natural. If I'm a little bit lower than my guy, then he's going to be looking down at me slightly. And that's going to give him that slightly more straight body position, which means he's more likely to be falling straight to earth rather than continuously driving forwards, which is the, the predominant thing with this. So it does a lot of good things. It helps his position, it helps your um, it helps the safety of this whole thing. <clears throat>